You don't need me to tell you, Liz Hayes is one of Australia's most well-known and revered journalists. Over an incredible 50-year career, she's perfected the art of exposing, questioning and celebrating thousands of other people's stories. Now, though, she's taken on what could be her most difficult assignment, telling her own story. Liz has written a memoir, a surprisingly candid portrait of a usually private and rather enigmatic reporter. One of the things I like about this is I get to see you. I know. I mean, one of the things that I did realise is in this job, we never see each other. No. But this I is a catch-up unlike any Liz Hayes and I have shared. No, no, not that. We're here for work and coffee, but mainly work, to talk about Liz's secret project of the last 12 months. My friend and colleague has written the story of her remarkable life. A girl from the country who became one of Australia's most recognisable stars. When you were that girl at the dairy farm, did you dream about the life you've had? <laughs> absolutely not. No, I was the innocent girl. I was absolutely living the most simplistic life, which I'm blessed to have had. But no, no, I, I, no, never in a million years. We didn't have a television. <laughs> so it wasn't about to have this dream at all. Hey, my mother, I'm sorry. I knew, I promised I'd never look like this on camera, but... As it turned out, Liz was made for TV. Good morning, growing. And her career on the small screen exploded. Elizabeth Hayes, Elizabeth Hayes, Elizabeth Hayes, National Nine News. But before the bright city lights and her ever growing profile, there was growing up on the family dairy farm near Taree on the New South Wales mid north coast. And a lucky break as a cadet on the local paper. Once you entered the world of journalism, how quickly did the bug bite? Oh, immediately. Immediately. Strangely. I instantly. I thought, this is, this is amazing to be able to tell people's stories. But one of her first stories was not about others, but herself. And what about your... Very important assignment, going and interviewing the visiting palm reader. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, well, yeah, this sounds a bit of fun. And I got down there and she grabbed my hand, she scrunched it up and all that sort of stuff and declared that I would be married four times. <laughs> I'm like 18. <laughs> and, uh, but she, she was good about it. She said, but you're going to be happy because you're going to be living near the water or something. So you'll be happy. <laughs> Ultimately, and I just remember thinking, how outrageous. Yeah. What a, what a mad, crazy woman. So, Liz, what happened? <laughs> she was bloody well right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. And happy? Are you happy? Oh, absolutely. Yes, I am very happy. And even though I haven't married four times, <laughs> I'm very happy. You are kind of married for the fourth time, aren't you? I'm, I'm the fourth time in a very strong relationship, but yes, no, I'm, I'm very happy. Liz is happily not married to Ben Crane, a former 60 Minutes sound recordist. But before Ben, Liz was married three times in just 10 years, including to quintessential locker, ad man John Singleton. And Liz Hayes. The failure of those marriages, all Liz's pain and self-doubt, was lapped up by a fascinated audience her success making her tabloid fodder. You can't go through that uh, and not come out the other side thinking, OK, what's wrong with me? Well, you say in your book that a, a friend from the country, from mm. home, asked you that question, what is wrong with you? I mean, that must have been like a hit to the solar plexus. Of all the comments I got, um, that crushed me, yeah. And I think that was because I, I thought... That's what everyone must be thinking. I'm, I'm a failure. So it was awful. But I was, I, I got up each time and I was pleased to have that bugger of a morning to get up to, you know, that really early hour. Could it have been the cause <laughs> of the uh, relationships not working? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think, I think it, me growing up, I think me, 
you know, just having to get my shit together, really. Me having to look at me. I, I know I can't blame work. In fact, I think work saved me a little. You mean that? <laughs> I mean it. As Liz reveals in her memoir, with her meteoric rise from news reporter to Today Show co-host in 1986, she may have been a network star, but she had to demand equal pay and equal treatment, developing a tough streak Liz relies on to this day. Strangely enough, I think they did see me as an equal, just not somebody who should be paid equally. <laughs> we know you and love you as being to the point and blunt at times. Was that a hard voice for you to find? Yes, yeah. That's not me. That's not, I'm not comfortable being that person, but I've become that person because no one listens to you. So you have to speak in a very straight manner. I couldn't pussyfoot around. I couldn't be even polite about it. I had to say what I thought. And that was very confronting for those hearing it. And I realised that. I certainly experienced Liz in full voice, <laughs> giving her opinions. And uh, she wasn't backward in coming forward. If Liz had a problem with something, you knew about it. But it wasn't rancorous. It was just, this is what I believe. And you guys better take it seriously. She wasn't being a diva. No, she wasn't being a diva. She was just drawing a line in the sand. And, and it was good to know. She was direct. Peter Meekin is the legendary former head of Nine's News and Current Affairs. So Liz Hayes still stands out for you? Absolutely. And I like to think that I've worked with many talented people on a number of networks, but she's up there. She's one of the best. In 1996, Peter asked Liz to join the team at 60 Minutes. Why was she a good choice for 60 Minutes? Well, the same reason that she was a good choice on the Today Show. She was warm, she was credible, and people liked her. You know, it, part of the gig on 60 Minutes is that the reporters, or at least most of them, have got to be liked. There's the occasional one who can be hated, like Richard Carlton was, by some of the audience, but with most of them, likability is a, is a plus. You know that, Tara. <laughs> I'm just trying to work out which one's hated at the moment. <laughs> you, it's like a cowboy movie. You need someone in a black hat. This is an Always wearing a white hat, Liz chose to run away with the circus. But as we learn now, her decision was in part driven by desperation. And if the Taliban break through... To escape the alarming attentions of a stalker. I'm Liz Hayes. The terrible I'm downside of her high profile. This will sound wrong, but I did decide that it was time for me to stop being on television every day. That sounds like the wrong reason to go to 60 Minutes, but that was part of my thinking was, I'm, I need to stop being so visible. The scrutiny was that bad? Yes. By now I have someone who's pursuing me, somebody who's... And I guess I'm talking about a stalker. Yeah, let's talk about yeah. that for a second. So how long did he stalk you for? Still. Still. Mm. So a stalker, what they do uh, is rob you of uh, your sense of safety and that's how it is. And I, that robs me um, of life that I hate having taken. In Liz's first year at 60, her feet barely touched the ground. Did that escape give you the peace you wanted? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody knew where I was. Not ever me. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. But I loved it. <laughs> immediately? Yeah, I loved it immediately. What about the adventure side of 60 Minutes? Um, how did those stories sit with you? Oh, uh, occasionally confronting. <laughs> Well, this tunnel goes about a kilometre and a half through this mountain and it's a very uneasy feeling being in here. But oh, I'd already tripped a bit and the guy had said, and I put my hand out, he said, no, 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 touch the walls, they're live wires. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to die. This is dangerous business. very dangerous business. What stories do you not like doing? I knew you were going to ask this. <laughs> <laughs> my... Least favourite 
story is the celebrity story, Tara. I do not like sitting with too many Hollywood celebrities. You've done that. And apologies to all those (laughs) celebrities I've sat with, but... We got all crushed. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, they're fantastic, huh? I take your part. (laughs) Stop! Come on, you sat with George Clooney, what, twice, I think. Oh, oh, no, well, hang on, that's, that, that's not a celebrity. That's a good bloke. <laughs> that's, a, that's almost a normal person. On the sexiest, powerful, smartest, beautiful, best-dressed, hottest hotties. That's the one I, I wrote that list. Um, worst of the worst, who name names, Liz Hayes, um, who have you found particularly difficult? I don't think I will ever get over the absurdness of Mariah Carey scheduled to do an interview with us at about eight o'clock in the evening and not turning up till about three in the morning. That's just rude. That was just outrageous. Okay, I'm nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I love your outfit. By then we were on couches unconscious. <laughs> From the ridiculous to the wrenching. Australia's heart broke when Liz bravely shared on 60 Minutes the shocking details of her father's death in 2020. Brian Ryan died after suffering a catastrophic stroke. Something like that, so simple, could go wrong. In a confounding hospital mishap, he'd been denied vital anti-stroke medication. I, you know, you might as well have punched me. It was terrible. And it was unfathomable. It was like, how does that happen? It sent me on a roller coaster of the worst kind, but it was a terrible, terrible moment. To take that very personal and, and painful experience public, to expose the circumstances of his death, was that a difficult decision or did you feel like you had no choice? I had no choice. I couldn't look away. I didn't think I could not tell it. Because what happened as a result of all of this in the dad's dying days, all these people came forward to tell me, oh yeah, this has happened to me too. And it just started pouring out. Even doctors were saying to me, "Um, this is just another example of what we're dealing with here. At 67, Liz's connection to her viewers and her commitment to tell their stories is as strong now as ever. It's the hardest decision you've had to make, but you had to make it. Yeah. I don't want my death to be in vain. Along with the release of her new book and reporting for 60 Minutes... Good evening, I'm Liz Hayes. Liz also hosts her own show, Under Under Investigation. Investigation. For the girl who once didn't have a TV, TV remains her lifelong passion. Under Investigation, (laughs) still reporting on 60 Minutes, 67. (sighs) Yeah, the energy, it just keeps coming. I didn't think it would happen, I have to say. I didn't, um, no, I didn't think I'd still be working as I am, but I, I tell you why I am because I still love it. I still have the energy for it. I, I like being a journalist, but no, I'm doing it because why not? <laughs> why not? Why not, yeah. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.